So what do you think about the, this is a big topic for us and for parents as well as teachers, the practice, the regular routine of practice, the motivation, how to motivate our children, our students uh, to practice regularly. This is a really significant issue. It has always been an issue in music study. I think it's a bigger issue today than it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago because um, of many things. I think the popular understanding of what it takes to make music well has is not accurate. So you go back to something like Glee that was on TV, um, in the States especially, um, and all of us people would walk into a room and all of a sudden everybody knew a song and sang it perfectly. Like we never saw the hard, hard work of practice. That's not something that people see. So they don't understand that it takes it is not an immediate gratification endeavor. It takes regular, steady practice. There are setbacks. It is hard. It is, and it's the a discipline of doing it every day or nearly every day that makes you better. You can't cram it at the last minute. You have to work on it regularly. And this is something that I think a lot of people today understand even less than they did 20, 30 years ago because of popular culture. So. I think regular practice is super important. I think there are ways to structure goals for regular practice so that it's less overwhelming. So ideally, we might want a student to practice, let's say, for 30 minutes every day. But maybe we start by aiming for a good solid 10. Mm -hmm. And if we can get that student to commit to and do a good solid 10, that's great. And if we can get five out of seven days a week, that's super, right? So we might, ha and then we work up to, maybe after a while at 10, we can work up to 15. Yeah. And we work up to getting to where we need. So I think we have to start with more bite-sized goals. I also think students need to be very clear on what they do when they practice. So. I liken this to studying. I remember when I went to college and a lot of my friends in college didn't know how to study. No one ever taught them how to study. They would just have the book open, look at a couple of pages, say, okay, I'm done, I studied. And then they would take the exam and not do well because they didn't know how to study. It's similar with practicing. It's not just putting the piece up and playing it once through. That's not practicing, right? We know this, practicing involves isolating challenging sections, slowing way down, yeah. separating hands if you have a multi-hand instrument, practicing each part individually, bringing them together, right? All of these things that might be focusing on a particular phrase and then adding a little bit on either side to see if you can do it in context. It might be making a mistake that you think you're likely to make and seeing what you do afterwards. There's, uh, you know, it might be practicing with a recording or a metronome or not. There's uh, so many different ways that we manipulate the music and manipulate the experience that a lot of people don't know. So I think we need to teach our students what practicing is mm -hmm. so that actually and their parents so that they can support it right this is so when i say i want you to practice this piece i want first i want you to do this then i want and like literally get that process clear That's and nice. and also spend lesson time on it yeah, so yeah. together we're going to walk through practicing this piece so then you'll know when you go home that's what you and so literally go through it so yeah. that the student knows use recordings right so record that session use checklists and other written tools i remember my piano teacher just used to write the names of the pieces i was supposed to work on and every now and then she'd write a little note like watch out for you know the staccato and measure eight but she didn't tell me how to practice I think we need to make a checklist of first you do this, then you do this, and be very explicit about it. Mm -hmm. I also think when we can make practicing feel more like a game and more like something fun and less like a chore, that can help. And there are ways we can do that. We can incorporate um, contests and challenges into the practice. So I'm going to ask you to work on this section and your challenge is these four measures. And then they come back and then if they meet that challenge, well, we get a sticker 
Or, and if we get enough stickers over time, we get a pizza party or a choice activity or something. So we're motivating with some extrinsic motivation too that comes back to their meeting challenges. You also can do competitions. This is tricky, but you can have different students, you know, competing against each other for how, who gets the greatest number of gold stars for their lessons over a certain period of time or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be careful with the competition. We yeah. don't want to turn music only into that. Yeah, definitely. So spice it up every now and then, it can be fun, but yeah. we don't want it to be only that. A lot of good music studios that I know do a month like a challenge, like the February, mm -hmm. February is kind of a tough month. It's snowy, no one wants to go outside, right? The February practice challenge. And students have to keep a log and submit recordings to prove that they practiced. And whoever gets the, whoever practices the most consistently for the most time wins first prize, second prize, et cetera. And there's a challenge. That can be a, a way to motivate as well.